This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and we wrap up the homestand and wrap up this series with the Nationals. It's the rubber game, the Washington Nationals and the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome to the broadcast booth here at Bush Stadium. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon, and it's a great matchup. If you love pitching, well, on paper, it could be really good. Max Scherzer, the St. Louis native, and a guy that's got a resume that's taking him to the Hall of Fame. And we know he will be a Cardinals Hall of Famer at some point. That's Adam Wainwright. We'll start with Scherzer. What is it about Max that makes him so good? Well, he's a power pitcher, for one, and he gets away with a lot of fastballs up in the zone. And then he starts to make you chase that, and then he can get away with the slider and the changeup, as you see the changeup right there. And he buries that slider down. He's getting people to cheat, and basically, that's what he lives off of, and that's what makes him so effective. In an exclusive group with those Cy Youngs and Cy Youngs with no hitters. Now, Adam Wainwright, month of September, it's been very good. Yeah, a little bit more finesse, but he's really come back and really, with a vengeance, starting to pitch in a little bit more, which has made his curveball more effective, and he's just been pretty dominant lately, and he's been like really the old Adam Wainwright with just without the big the big time velocity. He gets it done on the field and off the field. Roberto Clemente Award nominee. That's Adam Wainwright of St. Louis. So look at that when we come back. is Adam Wainwright as we get you set for baseball he's getting loose on what should be a gorgeous just a fabulous day here at Bush Stadium our TD Ameritrade look at the right call it's Adam Wainwright this season he starts at home he's been terrific eight and three two point two six ERA day games even better seven a record of five and one and an ERA of one point eight seven it is a rubber match between the Nationals and the Cardinals. Beautiful weather. Let's hope for a big crowd. Big, big day here at Bush Stadium. Cards and Nets comes your way next. Roberto Clemente Day. And just moments ago in front of our crowd here at Bush Stadium, the resume of Adam Wainwright as to why maybe he should win the Clemente Award for his contributions to humanity and uh, what he's done for so many people not only here in St. Louis but across the world literally across the world Adam Wainwright and he's going today for St. Louis with Jim Edmonds I'm Dan McLaughlin Jim Hayes is with us as well it's the Nationals and the Cardinals beautiful day here in St. Louis 82 degrees and oh it's gotten tight in the central this is some fun <laughs> I love it I love it two games Chicago Milwaukee two out Cincinnati 13 and a half Pittsburgh 19 after today the Cardinals fly out to Wrigley Field they'll take on the Cubbies first of four tomorrow night first things first though and it's Max Scherzer and the Washington Nationals Should be a good matchup to watch today two good pitchers pretty good lineups nice warm day Should be a good time for baseball nice warm day and I'll tell you what, we're sandwiched in here. It's perfect. I love it. It's great. We got Mitch here. Mitch is, I mean, he's dialed in to my left. Always look. He's always dialed, dialed in. in. Dialed in. Where's Dawn? I don't see. Dawn's over there. She's dialed in. The crew is dialed in. I'm sure the truck is dialed in. Oh, you know they are. They haven't missed a beat since 78. And the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Adam Wainwright. Fastball, curve, slider, and change. So Wainwright has won each of his last three starts. Longest stretch of this year. First three-game streak since July 2nd through the 16th of the 2016 season. So you may be wondering when's the last time he's won four straight. And that was back in September of 2014. He's been so good here in this final month. So good in day games and so good at home this year. Well, the Nationals, they will not win the East, but they have a great shot to get into postseason play. And with guys like Corbin last night or Strasburg or today's starter, Max Scherzer, one game take all. Boy, they'd be tough. They have a game and a half lead. We got off to a terrible start. That's Chip Hill, and he is managing for Davey Martinez, resting comfortably back home in Washington. So Trey Turner at the top. Then Adam Eaton, Anthony Rendon, Soto, Kendrick, who had a big night 
In game two, Cabrera switch hitter, Robles, Gomes, and Scherzer. Mike Schilt and the Cardinals trying to bounce back. And here we go, Adam Wainwright. Old Uncle Charlie still going strong. And the first pitch, take it for a strike, and we're underway. The Cardinals have dropped five of their last eight, and in those five losses in that span, only 12 runs scored. So offensively, that's been a concern, and a little bit the bullpen here recently, too. Yeah, just a little struggles. Clearly, there's struggles when you lose, and you point them out. Some opportunities last night to score, and they didn't get the runs in. And, you know, bullpen's kind of get to the end of the year. It's obviously not going to be as sharp, but hopefully some of those guys can get a little bit of a break, and we can score some runs and cruise into the playoffs. It's going to be a lot of work, though. A lot of work. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Turner. Fouled back in a good cut. Great speed with Turner. 30-plus stolen bases to mix in his 14 home runs. The 2-2 pitch. Curveball hits sharply. And past the third baseman today, Matt Carpenter. Out to left. So Carpenter getting his start at third. It's not Tommy Edmond that has ruled a base hit. Ozuna in left, Fowler in center, Edmond in right. Carpenter, DeYoung, Wong, and Goldschmidt along the infield. Molina behind the plate around the horn, presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. That ball was scorched off the bat of Turner, and now the running game becomes a factor here today. Definitely can be an issue. Adam does a really nice job of mixing up his looks and mixing up his times. Goldschmidt will get the shore out at first. May have had a play at second. He had a play at second. I don't know if he just was thinking ahead of the game with the speed of Turner and not wanting to risk making a bad throw and take the shore out. I think if he throws to second, he gets him for yeah, sure. I think he does too. I think he. And you might get a double play. Kind of weird when he, like, as soon as he caught the ball, I was kind of looking at the angle of the throw, thinking maybe Turner was in the way. And you know it was in the way. The umpire. It's very similar to a play that uh, we saw a couple of weeks ago. Here's Rendon, one for 13 against Adam Wainwright. But Paul DeYoung, is he in the way or just in that that sight line where you, you look up quickly, you've got to make the play, and you see him, and you say, well, let's just get the shore out. And that's what DeYoung tried to do, and it looks like that's what Goldie just did. Yeah, sometimes, you're, like you say, you kind of pick your head up and you don't see what you think you're going to see and it just kind of catches you off guard and your first reaction is to just go to first base get the out and that's a line foul with runners in scoring position the opposition batting 241 against Adam Wainwright who defeated the Nationals back on the 30th of April. That seems like a long time ago. Two runs in six and a third. He's been really good here at home. And the splits, though, are glaring. 14 starts at home, eight and three. The ERA just over two. 14 starts on the road. The ERA above six. Inside to Rendon, who will get consideration, undoubtedly, for the MVP. Lowest home ERA, Hendricks, Ryu, Mats, Corbin, and Adam Wainwright. So Adam has won each of his three September starts. One run, only 12 hits, 20 combined innings. Brewers, Pirates, and Giants. Out of play. He said after the win over the Brewers in his last start, had a little tweak in his pregame routine that's given him more energy. Did not want to reveal the changes of what he was doing in his pregame, but he's a guy that is meticulous when it comes to what he does on just the off days, the preparation, and then clearly the day that he pitches. Well, that tells you something, right? Fit 14 years in the league, and he's still making adjustments to figure out how to better himself down the stretch run. Comes out a little bit later now, stays out of the heat for a little bit more time and goes out there, gets his stuff done, and gets back in here. I don't think that these guys need to throw as much, you know, especially at the end of the year, as much in the bullpen as maybe at the beginning of the year. And sometimes you just got to trust yourself and 
get loose and get out of there. And a fly ball into right center. Catch made by Fowler. And that's out number two. Three and four of this Washington Nationals lineup. They have got some power. Rendon 34 home runs and now Juan Soto. He has 34 home runs. You know the last time we saw the Nationals the Cardinals took three of four and you thought well Davey Martinez. What's the future for him team was struggling. They had a bad start they were 19 and 31. And since May 24th they've gone 64 and 36. So credit to Davey and his staff to get this thing right. And now Soto steps out and he does that all the time as we talked about in game two. Yeah he likes to step out. I think he likes to get under the skin of the pitchers. Soto technically made his major league debut on May 20th of 2018. But he technically hit his first career home run on May 15th of 2018. Nets, uh, the Nats had a game that was suspended with the Yankees made it up on June 18th. Soto was in the bigs. Homer in the completion of a suspended game so it went down in the record books being played on May 15th. Quite the anomaly. <laughs> it was a little awkward scenario but nonetheless. Kind of <laughs> kind of a goofy situation right. Really odd. <laughs> Soto was the runner up in the rookie of the year voting last year to Ronald Acuna. You think about Rendon and Soto most runs batted in by teammates in all the baseball combined they've got two hundred and twenty five. So the middle of this lineup this is dangerous. Yeah they're definitely deadly. Even with Eaton. Turner. He's got a, this is a good lineup. Howie Kendrick hit 340 now. Here's a 1 2 pitch to Juan Soto. Take it for a ball. And Soto's call up to the majors kind of unexpected, but then had to be rushed. There was a wrist injury to Victor Robles. Nats needed an outfielder. Howie Kendrick had an Achilles injury, so they called up Soto when Robles was on the shelf, and boy, are they happy they did. The 2 2 hit on the ground to short to Young. Nats will strand a runner. Coming up in the bottom of the first here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the leadoff man, Dexter Fowler. Then Colton Wong and Paul Goldsmith. There's no score. Dexter Fowler at the top of the Cardinal lineup. The switch hitter. Then Colton Wong and Paul Goldsmith. Marcelo Zuna, Matt Carpenter, Yadier Molina, Paul DeYoung, Tommy Edmond, Adam Wainwright. Indeed, player resume. A three sports star right here from St. Louis. Basketball, baseball, football, then drafted by the Cardinals, 43rd round in 2003, did not sign, went to the University of Missouri, was a finance major at Mizzou, and I think he uh, chose the right major, especially after signing a seven-year, $210 million deal. Might, need, <laughs> might not need to be a major in finance. You just throw it in the bank and let it come to you. There you go. With that kind of money, right? Hyundai pitch arsenal on Max Scherzer. Fastball slider change and curve. Talked to Max the other day and he said he would have mom and dad here a lot of family and friends. He said it is even at age 35 special to come back home and pitch right here at this ballpark Bush Stadium grew up cheering for the St. Louis Cardinals. Fan of this organization. 
He was the 11th overall pick, and because of that, the first ever first-round pick to come out of the University of Missouri in baseball. And the one-two pitch. I love watching this guy throw. Good changeup right there. Yeah, I think that. I think that situation today is you got to be a little patient, but also aggressive in the strike zone and try not to chase. Toyota so, key to the game. I'm going to give you my key to the game was what I just said, but really just be patient because you know he's going to throw a lot of pitches and you can make him get that pitch count up and then be aggressive inside the zone. He's going to throw fastballs to hit, and then he's going to throw fastballs to chase, and he's going to throw sliders to chase. And you saw how good the changeup was, but it bounced at the plate. So really just look inside that zone, inside the strike zone, and try to stay with it. Parkway Central grad delivers to Colton Wong, and if he gets that call on the outside portion of the plate, could be a long <laughs> afternoon for the be Cardinals. a long day. Home plate umpires John Tumpain, Manny Gonzalez at first, Sam Holbrook, the crew chief, Jim Wolf down at third. Here's the 0 1. He is so intense, and we see the Nationals a lot now since they've moved to the West Palm area in spring training. So he'll make a start or two against the Cardinals, and then you watch him throw on the side. Everything is done with a purpose, everything is done with intensity. I mean, Jimmy, I went and watched a bullpen in spring training, and he's screaming at himself. <laughs> yes, I saw that one day. It's unbelievable. Gets frustrated at himself. I, you know, I love that. You know, just to love, like, guys that would get mad at themselves for not being able to make pitches. That's kind of what he does. He gets into it. Jake Peavy comes to mind. He used to be screaming out on the mound all the time for San Diego. And you don't think that this guy is fired up for this kind of start late in the season, pennant race, and back home in St. Louis? I don't think it gets any better than this for a guy from right here, here in St. Louis, and coming back, like you said, pitching for a the stretch run and the chance to get into the playoffs. Nasty. Just got a piece. Wong. One and two to count. He's three for 17 against Scherzer. There aren't many that have good numbers across the board in Major League Baseball against Max Scherzer. And in this lineup today, collectively, all the numbers together, 198 the average against Mad Max. Shift on the right side. One ball, two strikes on Colton Wong. Hits it into the shift. Three hops. Two away. The Nats defense behind Scherzer. Around the horn presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Center. Soto, Robles, Eaton in the outfield. Rendon, Turner, Cabrera, Kendrick on the infield. Jan Gomes is behind the plate. And I was just rethinking that whole thing, too. It's, I don't know, like, watching Colton Wong's at bat. Maybe rethink my little bit of the key to the game where like I, I still want to be patient but if he throws me first pitch fastball I'm swinging because I do not want to get to the put away pitches I don't want to sit up there with two strikes thinking is he going to throw me 95 in 95 out 95 up breaking ball nasty change up like I don't want to mess with that I just want to get after something and he can spot it and he spots it but he's away a, a lot so I'm looking away and I'm just going to try to hit the ball to center field and try to do it before he gets into that rhythm. But Old Schmidt three for 22 against Scherzer. But also the patience part is he does throw a lot of pitches outside the strike zone trying to get you to chase. 0 2 pitch and he struck him out. So two strikeouts in the inning. Cardinals go quietly. Longtime major leaguer Howie Kendrick leads it off when we come back. Scherzer strikes out two of the three that he sees in the bottom of the first. What is it like? What's it going to be like facing Max Scherzer today, Jim Hayes? I tell you, the Cardinals have already been tested in this series by the Nats rotation. Today they get Max Scherzer. Colton Wong told me the Cards love the challenge of facing the best pitchers 
in baseball. Colton said you want to face the best to see what you're made of. You can't be afraid to see how you match up against the best guys, especially when you're planning on making a postseason run. Dan Mike Schilt says the game plan against Scherzer today, very simple. Be ready to hit. He's going to come right at you. Kind of following up, Jimmy, on what you were saying. If you get that one pitch, go for it. That's Howie Kendrick. That's Wong over to Goldschmidt and the out. Okay, so I want to change my key to the game now that I thought about it. No problem. <laughs> we move on the fly here. Now Jimmy. that I've watched a little bit. All right, what do you got? Well, think about be aggressive, but inside the strike zone. Anything else you want to change? Yeah, the uh, barbecue stain on my white T-shirt. I think it looks good on you. It shows you're a man of the people. That's a song, too, by the way. Is Estrubal Cabrera, the 33-year-old from Venezuela. Said he started switch hitting at the age of three. <laughs> they gave him something to swing, and he said, I, you know, just started just swinging confused, the bat so on. Just yeah, swinging in circles. Both sides of the plate. Where's number 13, as many do from Venezuela to honor Omar Vizquel. He's a former shortstop. Primarily, he's been at third base, second base here with the Nats. And when Cabrera joined the Nats, third base coach Bob Henley gave him that number 13. Henley switched to 14. Edmund, two away. I thought that uh, a lot of the guys also wore 13 for Davy Concepcion. Be another one? Sure. And he is Venezuela, if I am not mistaken. Ozzy Gian would be another one, too. A lot of guys have talked so, about uh, Ozzy Gian. Who started it? Concepcion. I wonder who was the very first Venezuelan to wear 13. No, but I think, I, I really do. I, I think uh, when I was down there, David Concepcion was, was big still. And obviously he was done playing, but uh, he's a big fixture down in, in Venezuela around the ballpark still to this day, I'd imagine. And a lot of guys admire that. And 13 gets carried down and passed down. And under the glove of Carpenter and right through the legs. It's his second chance today. First one was ruled a hit. That one will be an error. And the batter will be the catcher, Jan Gomes. Whoops. See that ball hit the edge of the grass and stayed down. He just missed it. Jan Gomes was on base twice last night. Originally drafted out of Brazil. Not many players coming from Brazil, but that's where he was born and raised. The 32 year old drafted by the Red Sox out of the University of Tennessee, but did not sign. And transferred to Barry University, which is located in Miami. For those of you that are familiar with the state of Florida. Drafted by the Blue Jays, 10th round in 2009. Made his debut in the big leagues in 2012. In the big leagues? You got it. Became the first Brazilian to ever play in Major League Baseball. And since his debut, four more from Brazil have played in the majors. Total of five, and he's the first. I'm sure he's very proud of that fact, as he should be. There's a base hit. So you have the air, should be out of the inning. It's more pitches, and it allows the Nats to get Scherzer up here and at least get him through the lineup. Now you got that right. Clearing this. I've, I've never really figured this out. I've played for 17 years, and I've never really figured out, and I know the different scenarios, but when you want the pitcher to come up and win, like, and get out of the way, but then also, like, if, if you got two guys on, like, put the ball in play. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm almost just and like a that. base hit into right. Edmund charging, and the throw to the plate. It's in time. The tag is there. A strike to the plate. With Turner coming up, they challenge Tommy Edmond. And he's up to the challenge with an outfield assist. I don't know what they were doing there. That's just a really bad call by their third base coach. Tommy makes a nice throw and plenty of time.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball brought to you by Budweiser. Wherever legendary MLB moments happen, Budweiser will be there. By Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the St. Louis area. Find yours at your Mid-America Chevy dealer. On the American Forces Network, aboard ships at sea all across the world. Thank you to all the men and women who serve in our armed forces. We so appreciate what you do for all of us to enjoy baseball here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Protect our freedoms. With Jim Edmonds, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and Jim Hayes is here. That's Tommy Edmonds, possessive. That's Not Edmonds. Jim Edmonds. That's but Edmonds. Yeah. First, Tommy Edmonds. First, first assist. Out, yeah, <laughs> field assist, and it comes from right has a, field. Has a nice ring to it. That was Edmonds' first assist. There you go. Here's Marcel Ozuna, followed by Carpenter, and then Molina. AARP take on Max Scherzer as Ozuna drove in four in game one in this series. He now has popped 28 home runs. Drove in all four in game one with two outs. It's also 10 for 33 against Scherzer with two homers. He is the one in this lineup that has an extended history against Max. His time down in Miami and in the National League Eastern Division. Grounds it to short. Four up and four down. Brings in Matt Carpenter. I'm not sure with the day baseball if you'll be able to see it quite as uh, well as uh, other times. And I'm sure that uh, Tommy, our esteemed director, will maybe get as tight as he can into that well, the worried what you're gonna say face right and eyes. Well, if you be quiet, I'll get to it. <laughs> Here's the first pitch well, to Carpenter. Up. The game's going on. But, by the way, I love Jimmy. I gotta give him trouble. Max Scherzer has different colored eyes. For those of you just joining the planet. Heterochromia, his right eye is blue, his left eye is brown. And there are some pretty famous people that have had this type of eye condition, not anything serious, just different colored eyes. Christopher Walken, Jane Seymour, Kiefer Sutherland, the president. I did not know that. Here's the O2. It's actually pretty cool. He said that's how his parents told him to treat it. If, you know, kids in school, sometimes they can be a little nasty, a little mean. He said, Mom told him, just have fun with it. You're special. You're a little different. You throw harder than everyone else. You're mean. You got a good <laughs> slider. You got a great slider. Carpenter grounds it right side. Kendrick back to the bag. And there's two away. Five straight to start this game for Scherzer. And it brings in Yadier Molina. Molina hitting 266 with eight home runs. And he's driven in 49. This could be a matchup of future Hall of Famers right here. I think Scherzer is there. And yeah. I'd say Yadier's there he's too. Big league baseball, baby, at its best. What's Timmy say about that? The big leagues, man. That's our buddy Tim McCarver. The native son, he loves Bush Stadium. Scherzer, four career starts. Bush Stadium, 25 innings, four earned, and a 1.44 ERA. I was going to say, how could you not get fired up for that, for this? 35 strikeouts against four walks. There were so many around baseball that looked at this delivery and thought, well, that's a delivery that's not repeatable. It'll get out of whack. And if you sign them long term, and I've talked to Max about this, if you sign them long term, it's going to be problematic for a club. Um, yeah, whoever was saying that, you're wrong. He's really good. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you were talking to me when I was writing down. Here's a 1 2 pitch. And he strikes out Molina, took some off it, and he's seen six and struck out half of them. We head to the third, and there is no score. Jonathan Barron is in Secaucus, New York, and watching us on Fox Sports Go. He never misses a game. Jonathan Barron, huge Cardinal fan. And taking in baseball on Fox Sports Go. You can as well. Blues hockey, the defending Stanley Cup champions, hit the ice in a couple of weeks for regular season play. And check out your St. Louis Blues on your favorite supported devices. Here's Trey Turner, Adam Eaton, and Anthony Rendon. The top of the lineup for the Nets. 16 consecutive scoreless innings at home right now for Adam Wainwright. Trey Turner originally drafted by the Pirates did not sign then the 13th overall pick out of NC State and then traded by the Padres to the Nationals who was a nine player three team trade in 2015 Rays were also in that deal Edmund over get over there and he can't come up with it. That is a shortstop second baseman third baseman but now in right field trying to keep his bat in the lineup. You see what happened right there. As soon as the ball hit his glove his glove hit the wall It might have actually hit the wall first. That is very tough to do for the baseball to be that close to the wall and still be almost caught. That's not a comfortable play over there in that corner. Here's a one two pitch. And for fans that are curious if that would have just grazed the wall first and then hit his glove it's a foul ball if he catches it. And the way you have to think about it is that the wall is like an extension of the ground coming up so it'd be like it hit the ground. And I believe that ball did hit the wall first barely. And that is a weird angle. Off the end of the bat Colton Wong. Turner almost beat it out. Boy does he get wow, down the line. Fly. The ballpark app. You can see some of Jim Edmonds and Rick Horton's favorite recipes at the ballpark app. Also, when you go to that ballpark, not only will you find those recipes, but you can see all the goodies at the various ballparks around Major League Baseball, the giveaways, where you want to sit, the ballpark app. Trey Turner is one for two, and now Adam Eaton. Not only is Anthony Rendon a free agent to be, so is Adam Eaton. Played in only 23 games last year with the Nats, tore his ACL, in that big trade with the White Sox. And that included Ronaldo Lopez and one Lucas Giolito. That's a steep price to pay for any player as they went and picked up Adam Eaton. Here's a 1 1 ground ball. Wong out number two. It brings in Rendon. He is tied for the major league lead with 119 runs batted in. Jose Abreu. Also with 119 for the White Sox. He's 13 shy of the Expos Nationals franchise record, which is held by Vladimir Guerrero, who played eight years north of the border. Guerrero wound up being an MVP with the Angels in 04. And one year he was one home run shy of being a 40 40 man. I believe he stole 40 bases. He was a big guy. He could run. Playing on that turf really beat up his body, too, up in Olympic uh, Stadium. Just such a big guy, big, lanky guy. Over 2,500 hits, nearly 1,500 RBI. 
449 home runs. Vladimir Guerrero now his son making noise with the Blue Jays. I remember when I got traded over and we played against him the first time. Somebody threw him a slider down and in and yanked it in the corner for a double. And then someone threw him like a 95 mile an hour fastball that was literally face high and he hit it off the right field wall. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. On a hop to Paul DeYoung, three ground outs. We've got a pitcher's duel, folks. This is gonna be fun. Nats, Cardinals, pennant race, Scherzer, Wainwright, day baseball in St. Louis. T-Mobile connection to the game. Some of the news and notes around Major League Baseball. Biggio, the, well, how about that? Second father-son duo hit for the cycle. Mike Yastrzemski hits a home run, and Carl is there, the Hall of Famer, to see it. And the Twins, first team in history to have five players, 30 or more home runs in a single season. Now, as the home run pertains to this ball game, yesterday, the Nationals became the 10th team to break or tie their franchise record for home runs in a season. Four other teams are within 10. You know how the ball is not juiced? No. There's no difference with the ball. It's the same. I have a question for you. Yeah, Jimmy. In all the games that you've done, and this is interesting because I can't ever remember it, that's the first time that I've ever heard Yaz's name being in a game. You know, sometimes you just kind of watch the TV good, yeah, and you see good, it. Good point. Talk about him a lot, but I'm not sure I remember talking about him. Certainly, well, I'll, I'll, I'll a say very this. very quiet name. No, to he, be. he was, I think, I think we were in interleague play against the Red Sox, and it was the, uh, the 67 club was being honored, the team that lost to the Cardinals in seven games. In the World Series. And I believe he was there for that particular night when they were being honored. They brought back those that are still with us. And uh, he was introduced, I believe. But that, to your point, I think that's the only time I can remember. I mean, for that kind of a name, like, sure, that Hall organization. Of Famer. Yeah, that's it's interesting. There's a swing and a miss for Paul DeYoung. That's maybe because we're so used to our guys being around so much. Good changeup right here. He's got, you kind of see right at the end of that release, he just flicks that hand at the very last second. You see the fingers really like get extended, and that ball just drops like a good old school split fingered fastball. So here is Edmund in right field today. Sixty seven Red Sox referred to as the impossible dream. They had not had a winning season since the late 1950s. Then lost to the Cardinals in seven games. There's a fastball at 95. Tommy thought that was going to be a change up down there. You see that fastball's been up. He saw the, that pitch down. He's thinking it's going to keep going down, and that's just the advantages of being able to throw all your pitches in different locations. That's pulled foul. Kia give it everything. Tommy Edmond on the home stand. Carl Yastrzemski in that 67 year won the triple crown. There's a fastball again and hit out of play. 96. The last to do that was Miguel Cabrera. That's an amazing feat. I mean, look, you got to have some kind of year. Even more amazing to be a left hander and do it because you get pitched around so much. And to do it in that ballpark too. Tell you what Miguel Cabrera is a special player in our generation. Some kind of hitter. 
In the air. Out to right. At the wall. Gone! He's got his first outfield assist. And now he homers off of Scherzer. Earlier in the homestand, he homered off of Josh Hader. This has been quite a find for St. Louis. The young man, Tommy Edmond, and it's 1-0. Tell you what, that's pretty impressive right there. That is just staying with the pitch. This is a slider down and in, and he slows his bat down. Look at the knee down. Watch this, watch this swing right here, Danny. This is how you do it on a ball down. Look at that knee wow. go down. There's your power. And just hit it on the barrel. It doesn't even swing hard. Got everything into it. That's impressive. This kid, what doesn't he do? This Edmonds kid. <laughs> Edmonds Edmund. becomes the 10th different Cardinal with 10 or more home runs. A new franchise record for St. Louis. <laughs> There's your one run, Adam. Go get him. Go get him. They used to have this saying when you played against guys like this that was the running joke that he would walk up to the pitcher and tell him if he threw a shutout he had a good chance for a tie. <laughs> Is the 15th home run that Scherzer has allowed this year. So the Cardinals first hit of the afternoon a Tommy Edmond home run is 10th. One ball and two strikes on Adam Wainwright with one down. And Scherzer questioning where that pitch is at. Steps away to collect himself. He was not happy. I'm still blown away by the way that Tommy hit that ball. That's just such a nice swing. And now Wainwright lines it out to left and the catch made by Soto. Well let's go back to the swing. I mean you're, you're talking about him being spread out. You're talking about the, the back leg dropping a bit and then you said something interesting. You, you, you slow down the bat with that type of pitch. You can see in real time motion that he started his swing and then he kind of just saw the slider. He got a little hesitation and then you just let the hands go. And that hesitation was what allowed him to get his knee down, his body down. You can't really see it in slow motion, but you can see just kind of change the bad angle a little bit but that hesitation was dropping the legs and going down after it and that's if you want to hit with power and if you're watching this game you have to use your legs how about the back knee almost hit the that's ground what I mean. he's like he went down and got it the key to that was he stayed centered he didn't leak if he leaks a little bit forward on that that's a ground ball second base there's no one pitch to Dexter Fowler and it's now nothing in two O2 pitch to Fowler strikes out for the second time and that strikeout number five Tommy Edmond his 10th home run it's been fun to watch this young man play the game one nothing St. Louis On a one-two pitch, a home run for Tommy Edmond. one nothing. our score. Let's check in with Jim Hayes. Dan, as you know, Edmond was really impressive during spring training, so it's not like his success came out of nowhere. Still, GM Michael Gersh admits Tommy has exceeded expectations. Gersh said, Tommy's so talented with speed and athleticism. He's also incredibly intelligent, so you never want to put a cap on guys like that. But if you ask me about what I thought he'd be doing in September, I probably wouldn't have said, playing in the big leagues and playing great. He's absolutely taken the ball and run with it. It's great to see. And Dan, for a guy who hasn't played right field since he was 12 years old, he's pretty good there too. Yeah, not bad. His first outfield assist here is Juan Soto. Jimmy, you had a nice conversation with the Cardinals GM on our pregame show. Did he talk about if the Cardinals get the postseason, what that roster may look like? He said they try not to talk about it in terms of being in the postseason because there is a jinx factor, believe it or not, but they are discussing scenarios and roster combinations. So they so did when, talk about it. So when that <laughs> moment happens, Dan, yes, they'll sir. be prepared. But again, you don't want to have that jinx factor. Yeah. 
tell me a little bit too and I'm going to wrap it up with this the 2 0 pitch to Soto and there's a strike he was trying to get time again. What's it like dealing with Tommy Edmond on a on a daily basis in terms of his first year in the major leagues and what you sense being around the game for a long time what it's like. Well first off you know he's not a real big guy but when he first came up he didn't have that look like he was scared or intimidated. He's a very confident young man but I can tell you this Danny you see him in the clubhouse no matter what he's doing he looks like he's having a ball so he's playing well he's enjoying the experience and he's never looked like he was overwhelmed by the magnitude of being a big leaguer not at all. All right Jimmy thank you. Little cat and mouse game here with Wainwright and Soto about stepping out getting back in. This is kind of fun to watch. Well I like the fact the umpire doesn't give him time. Because he knows he's asking for it late. And I don't know if that's just his makeup or if he does do that on purpose. I know a lot of guys used to step out that could see if a uh, guy was tipping pitches or something and if they didn't like what they saw they'd back out and pretend like that's something in their eye. But if you do it that late consistently the umpire could not give you time. And the curveball is pulled foul. Now technically if he wanted to step out of the box here fully out of the box he could. On a foul ball you can do that. With a swing and a miss or a called strike or a ball he's supposed to have at least one foot in the box and let's go. Well they want rules they just don't really go through with them. It's another ground ball out. Hall of Famer and humanitarian Roberto Clemente dedicated his life to helping others. Major League Baseball annually honors the player who best exemplifies Clemente's spirit. Adam Wainwright is the 2019 Clemente nominee for his charitable work through his Big League Impact Foundation in the St. Louis community and beyond. Visit MLB.com slash Clemente 21 to vote for Wayno. Clemente the first Latin American player to be inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame in 1973 and there's a base hit into right off the bat of Howie Kendrick. And he was into the Hall of Fame with not the custom customary five year waiting period after he was going to take supplies to Nicaragua and his plane crashed and uh, everyone died in that plane crash fatally. So the base hit by Howie Kendrick. Kendrick playing in back to back games has not started in consecutive games since three straight at first base and that was nearly a month ago but he's swinging the bat so well hard to keep him out. Yeah how do you not play him after last night. It's not like he got three little blue pits either. You know he was like hitting balls all over the place and then they just rifled another one into right field. This guy can hit. You're not a 294 career hitter for no reason at all. Seven for his last 10. Into right. Edmund a sliding catch. He's doing a little bit of everything. He's in the middle of everything right now. Assist Homer. Look up against the wall. Little sliding catch. It's a good play right. This isn't an easy play especially for a guy who doesn't play a lot of outfield. Tommy Edmond played collegially at Stanford and in 631 college at bats he had a total of four home runs. In the minor leagues over 1400 at bats he had 23 homers and so far in the major leagues 280 bats and he's got 10 home runs. Go figure. On the ground again and this will be the eighth ground ball out already for Adam Wainwright. Midway through four and it's one nothing. During the Tommy Edmund show. Our Lou Fuse this date in Cardinals history. See more at Fuse.com. Matt Holiday. Walks off the Cubs to extend the division lead to 10 games. That was in his first partial season with St. Louis. And I said, with that call, welcome to the Cubs Cardinals rivalry. And it's one of the best in baseball that will be reignited tomorrow night at Wrigley Field. Looking forward to it.
Colton Wong, Paul Goldschmidt, Marcelo Zuna. See more at Fuse.com. And we want to say thank you to the good folks at the Fuse Automotive family. Their sponsorship of Cardinals baseball this year is Wong. Shows bunt and looks at a strike. All right, Jimmy, let's talk about the bunt. Again. That's a weapon. Certainly with Wong and his speed. Well, and the good thing here, too, you just draw you draw in the third baseman. Popped up left side. And it is out of play. Nothing at two. Shift on the right side of the infield. And a swing and a miss, and that is strikeout number six for Max Scherzer, the St. Louis native, Parkway Central grad, went to Mizzou, number retired. Some kind of talent. I think that's just really cool. It's just too bad he didn't get a chance to play here, or he hasn't had a chance to play here yet. How awesome would that be? Right in your backyard. Well, it was awesome because I did it for a while, but. Even better, he went to Mizzou also. Well, he's been back here, as I mentioned, those numbers. He has just dominated St. Louis. And a fastball to Paul Goldschmidt. I think he pretty much dominates everyone. He 2017, is, he's 25 and 7 on the road. Here's a 1 0 pitch, and Goldschmidt lifts a high fly ball into right center. Man, he just missed that. Robles with the catch. And now a quick word from Great Southern Bank. Emptied your digital wallet? We understand. Great Southern Bank. We're fans too. I remember doing games at spring training with you and talking about Marcelo Zuna specifically. And you were working with Marcel about staying back. Jim Edmonds, Dan McLaughlin with you. Mitch. <laughs> Mitch Smith behind hey, Mitch. us. But uh, what do you see with with Marcel in terms of, of where he's at with balance and, and timing and those kind of things as opposed to what you saw in the spring training? Well, I think Marcel's one of those guys when he starts to swing for home runs and batting practice, he'll take that out um, in the game and it gets really jumpy. And he was just having trouble staying back. So I actually took my um, phone in the in the uh, in the dugout during games in spring training and literally sat down, you know, real low, got my phone out. And was taking a video of him and literally showing it to him right there on the spot, which I think is a great tool because it's instant feedback. And, you know, you can tell someone, and this game is so weird. It's like a lot of things, right? Like your golf swing. I could tell you, hey, you're doing this. You're like, yeah, it doesn't. But you can think to yourself, it doesn't yeah. feel that way. And so I'm like, you need to stay back. And he's like, oh, I was. So sometimes I you got to see it. Yeah, I showed him the video, and I'm like, that's not staying back. You yeah. know, it's like you have to sometimes see what you can't feel. And. He did a really nice job. I mean, it took a solid five or six days of basically staying on him, but just as a friend, you know, I'm not the hitting coach, so I was just kind of showing him something, and he's working with Jeff, and, and Jeff's doing his thing, but it's just nice to have that. I mean, I, don't, I would have never thought about it, but one day I literally just took my phone in with me, and I was like, I'm going to video him today. That is pulled foul. As sometimes you see with him, the front leg or the front portion of the body get a little jumpy, don't you? Well, yeah, he, he, I don't know why, because he's so strong. He really, you don't see that center of gravity right there. That's actually a pretty nice spot for him. He was just out there a little early. But he's one of those guys that I think when he gets a pitch to hit, he wants to hit it out of the stadium. He just doesn't want to hit it on the nose. And and sometimes that'll get you kind of jumpy a little bit, but get you, get you out front. And then that's just what happens is you don't get any balls in the air. You know, being out front, your bat drags just a little bit, especially on a sinker ball or a ball down. You kind of just get on top of the ball. That's why you want to try and stay behind it and get the bat and the legs down in the zone and kind of hit through it. Just not really kind of hit through it. You want to hit through it. Sure. Three and two the count here on Marcelo Zuna. Scherzer has struck out six. He's allowed one hit. That was a home run by Tommy Edmond. Hit down the left field line and pulled foul. 
Rod Carew told me the more the ball is down and in for him, the more he wanted to hit the ball the other way. He didn't want to hit the ball on the ground. So he would just try to stay inside stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, I told him one time, man, I just missed that ball was in. He goes, no, no, no. That's where you want to hit it. You know, you want to stay inside of it and hit the ball in the other gap, not try to pull that ball and percentage is saying that you're going to roll over it. Here's a 3-2 by Scherzer. And he struck him out, got him to chase. And that's seven today. We head to the fifth. It's day baseball, one nothing on a Tommy Edmond home run. Pujols Family Foundation teamed up with Cardinals Care on Saturday, November 9th, right here at Bush Stadium. STLHomeRunDerby.com to raise funds for many charities throughout the area, including the Pujols Family Foundation. Jan Gomes, Max Scherzer, Trey Turner. What has been a well-pitched game on both sides. A lot of ground ball outs that uh, Adam Wainwright has been able to induce thus far. Eight, nine, and one for the Nets. And that is fouled back. Since 1920, there have been seven starting pitchers. Seven. 150 more wins. Under 100 losses and a sub 3-5 ERA. You're watching one of them right now. Another one is resting in the dugout in Max Scherzer. Dizzy Dean. Sandy Koufax, Ron Guidry, Adam Wainwright, Clayton Kershaw, Scherzer, and David Price. Dizzy Dean, the pitching leader of the Gas House Gang here in St. Louis, won 134 games. And the last to win 30 in the National League. 2 1 pitch. Popped up. Yachty shading from the sun. He's over near the screen and it's out of play. The story goes with Dizzy Dean. He walked up to Branch Rickey, who was running the Cardinals minor league system, and said, and apparently Branch was in so Oklahoma, was and said, well, I'm the guy that's going to win a lot of ball games for you. So sign me up. And Branch <laughs> Rickey apparently was reading his newspaper at the local hotel scouting talent in Oklahoma and said who is this guy. Well he was happy he signed him. Dizzy Dean. The 2 2 up the middle and a base hit. And Dizzy went on to be a broadcaster butchered the English language to the point that there were teachers that actually were asking him to be taken off the air. Glad those teachers aren't around now. A base hit for Jan Gomes. He's two for two, and it brings in Scherzer, who singled to right. And the Nats really forced the issue, trying to score Victor Robles, and he was thrown out at the plate by Tommy Edmond. First outfield assist. And a strike. See if we can check out the bunting style of Max Scherzer. Well, there is a science to it about getting the bat out in front, where you want the barrel, how you want to position your hands. I mean, look at where his hands are right there. That's not it. So, where do you want to be with your hands? Well, you, you first of all, he's on his heels, and clearly, he's not comfortable in the box. But. <laughs> But your hands got he's got to have some more room. He's got to be separated, but you got to be in there. And I know he's been I think he was actually was he the one that hit himself in the face, right? He's bunting, I think, during this year in batting practice. All right, Jimmy, here's the bat. You ready? Oh, I got it. It's right here. I got it right here. So he's there holding the bat like this and going like this. But you really want to get it? no, you got to get. First of all, he's, he's like kind of standing there, like kind of leaning back. Like, I don't want to yeah. be here right now. We got to be in there, be down. What about where the and bat the, is positioned, though, in terms of where it is with your body and out in front of the plate, too? Well, you you try to, what they say, set the angle. So if you're going to bunt towards third or first, you're already kind of having that set. 
So when you just go up and down, you don't stab or you don't pull back to go to first. And that creates one less issue and one less problem because you've already set the angle. Now all you got to do is go up and down with your body and your legs. And I still think the best way to, to bunt is to get down low on your knees a little bit, like get your knees in there. And then you're creating this strike zone so much with your face. And then if that ball is out of that area where you're looking, then you just pull back. And so you're kind of getting in the strike zone with your body and your head down there a little bit. And then when that ball's coming in, you're kind of looking straight up the barrel of the, basically the pitching lane. And then if it's not in that box, you could just pull quickly back. Sure. One ball, one strike. Trey Turner is one for two. Hit one sharply to start the game pass. Carpenter ruled a base hit. Hard hit ball. And a ground ball here. Out the turn and out at first. It's a double play. Six for three on one of the speediest runners in all of baseball. The turn by Cole Long, nicely done, maybe on his way to a gold glove. By Seidman Cancer Center, national leaders in cancer, and by Toyota. Let's go places. The Gateway City of St. Louis, one of the great baseball cities in America. And the Cardinals have a one run lead. Here at the bottom of five, and what is really a tight situation right now in the NL Central. Later tonight, the Cubs and the Brewers will play. Both those teams are two games back, and boy, would that be nice from the Cardinal perspective to post a victory today and put a little bit more pressure on them. Tyler Malley will go for Cincinnati against Chicago. Denilson Lamat will go for the Padres. And after this ball game, it's four with Chicago, three with Arizona, and then three back home with the Cubs to wrap up the regular season for St. Louis. Carpenter, Molina, and DeYoung. Matt Carpenter getting the start at third base today. Twenty one of the last thirty nine outs made in this series by the Cardinals have been strikeouts. Yeah, it's, they've had some pretty good pitching to deal with these last three days. Patrick Corbin was exceptional yesterday. He had a great slider working. You know the first guy and this guy. The Strasburg and now Scherzer. Corbin slider have fooled the Cardinals. Full. St. Louis swung and missed at 17 sliders. Eight of the 11 strikeouts that he had were against that pitch. It's definitely his go to pitch. Corbin's 11 strikeouts pushed the season total to 224. So then, along with Strasburg, Monday starter Scherzer today, first team in the history of the National League to have at least three pitchers record a minimum of 222 strikeouts in a season. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty. Impressive. I was. That's it out to deep right. Off the bat of Carpenter. He better hurry up on his way to second. Diving in and safe. A leadoff double for Matt Carpenter. I'm not sure if he thought off the bat this ball was going to be caught or gone, but he did not get out of the box very well. It was a weird, weird line drive. It had a little top spin. I think he hit it better than he did, but it just kept going. And Adam Eaton really never turned around to run for it. It's a pretty good throw right here. He just missed. He just missed the tag. Watch this. Carp's hand is right there. Oh, he just did beat it. Hang on to that bag there, Carp. Pretty good picture right there. Just sprawled out on the dirt. Yeah, Umpire was, calling you safe. Tag right there. You saw last night. Nothing safe with replay. Yadier Molina struck out back in the second inning. Showing bun and pushes it up the first base line, rolling foul. Oh, that hurts right there. Well, he's dropping down that bun. And Yachty is one for 15 after striking out in the second inning against Scherzer. So maybe he's thinking, 
Well, you know what? Let's just get the bunt down, get the runner over, and I'll tell you what he's thinking. Get that runner over. Move this is on. playoff baseball. If I get that runner over, he's got a better chance for Young to drive him in. This is where now he'll swing and push one through the right side and get a base hit. Also, he's thinking about talking to Billy Finley about the uh, angle of that grass. Yes. <laughs> Billy Finley, the grounds crew leader here in St. Louis. Two strikes on Yadier Molina. The 0-2 pitch to the Cardinal catcher. Check on Carpenter. Hit to the right side. And the only play is to get the out at first base. I'll tell you what, that's how you play the game, and that's how you become and be a leader on this team. Giving yourself up and just trying to do something that you don't have to do. Basically giving yourself up right there. Harrison Bader will pinch run for Carpenter. Hope you're loose. Welcome to the game. And Mike Shield pulling no punches right here. That's what I'm talking about. This is playoff baseball. This run is important. Infield drawn in. And the young oh. follows it back. Good now swing. we saw the Cardinals with a double steal last night. Bader. Drew a throw to second base and it went into center field that led to a run. Both the runs scored by the Cardinals last night came on errors. And Bader, one of the fastest runners in all of baseball. So ball, contact, anything on the ground, he has taken off. Here's an 0-1 pitch. On the ground, right side, and Bader will score easily. 2-0 Cardinals. Matt Carpenter does not score that run. You don't think so? No. He gets a good jump. Even if he gets a good jump, he is easily two or three steps slower than Harrison Bader. And that is just a big run right there. I'm telling you, when you these guys, when you face these guys, you have to score somehow. You have to play that game right there. You can see Scherzer, he's fired up right now. He made a good pitch. DeYoung hit a squibber, and he literally cannot calm down on the mound. He's so frustrated. Rightfully so. Made a good pitch. Should have gotten himself an out without a run scoring. There's Tommy Edmond. He started the scoring with his home run on a 1-2 pitch to right field. His 10th of the year back in the third. So more than likely what happens, Bader stays in the game. He'll play center Fowler will shift to right and then Edmund will come in from right field and play third base. It was the rare three one three run batted in. Doesn't happen very often. Then again this is an odd game. 2 0 pitch. How about that for a little bit of respect. Max Scherzer throwing a 2-0 breaking ball to a rookie. Comes another one. Oh, that one caught the home plate umpire, almost knocked him down. That's John Tumpain. The BJC Healthcare difference maker already in this game has been Tommy Edmond. The first outfield assist for Tommy in the big leagues. Then a home run and a sliding catch. Then a little bit of everything. And this time he strikes out. So Scherzer gets the strikeout number eight. We played five. Cardinals add to their lead. This all important game number three. It's two nothing.
Once on tap, as Adam Wainwright is loose for the sixth inning, it's off to the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. And tomorrow we'll not have the game, but we will on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Budweiser, what's on tap? Bader in center, Fowler in right, Edmund at third. Adam Eaton at the play, nothing into the count. So two, three, and four. That means you've got Rendon on deck and then Soto. Big inning here for Adam Wainwright. Adam Eaton is 0 for 2 with a pair of ground outs. Little flare out to left, and that'll get down for a base hit. And the tying run will come to the plate. The sixth hit for the Nets. Fought it off with two strikes. Good piece of hitting right there. Just getting the ball in play. Half the battle sometimes, and especially two strikes, ball inside. Can't cheat. You got to worry about the two seamer and the cutter. Just kind of trying to stay with it and do whatever you can to put it in play. So now Anthony Rendon, he's fly to center and also grounded out to short. Runner at first, leadoff base hit for Eaton here in the top of the sixth. Pitch count only at 65. Cardinals turn that double play off the bat of Turner back in the fifth. They've had an outfield assist at the plate on a throw by Tommy Edmond and an inning. So defensively, the Cardinals have had some big plays. Good pitch in on his hands. Kubota power stats and the National League ranks and why he might be the MVP average extra base hits the runs batted in the OPS. He actually has more extra base hits than he does strikeouts. Now think about that in this day and age of power that is accepted with the strikeout. He's got more extra base hits than strikeouts. Good time to have a great year. Free agent to be. <laughs> you called that, didn't you? Man. Runner at first, Adam Eaton. Here's the 0 2 pitch upcoming to Rendon with the outfield deep straight away. Pick off at first and back in safely. Maybe one of the most amazing stats in the history of the game, one that I'll never forget. 2006 Albert Pujols had more home runs almost than strikeouts. He was one shy. He had 49 home runs and 50 strikeouts. And there's a strikeout for Wayne. It's amazing. He could put the ball in play with the best of them. Like he would just literally like see the stuff that Yachty does. Give himself up and just put the ball in play. And sometimes that would be a little slash to right field and a base hit. See this good fastball right there. Adam just rare back and threw one as hard as he could down the middle. Things he's been doing a little bit more now this year, a little bit at the end, has been feeling better. He's been throwing that fastball when everyone's starting to look for that cutter and that and that uh, curveball and just letting it go. It was April 28th of this year. The Nats, the first team in the history of the game, three players under the age of 22, all the homer in the same game. One of them was this man, Soto. 
Victor Robles and then Carter Keeboom also did that. So they do have a little age in this roster, but yet some youth. And it's coming. And for Soto, it's here. What a player. Interesting how he keeps that front foot. And I, I find it interesting. We've been talking a lot about where guys put their hands. But Soto's a guy that has a unique look with the front portion of his stance and his foot. Well, I think guys that will turn their feet in like that are really trying to force themselves to stay closed, keeping that front leg closed. So when he steps forward, he steps forward towards the pitcher. Maybe in the past he had a little trouble with stepping out, kind of opening up too early. I feel like I don't remember him being that blatant with it last year. And that is really inward. Reminds me a little bit of Don Mattingly used to do that a little bit, yeah. not to that, not that extent. I used to turn in a little bit more with two strikes, trying to stay on the ball a little bit longer. Now he's flat footed and not going to really stride. Just make a little adjustments. Start number 263 together for Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. 263. This day and age of professional sports free agency keeping guys together superstars and they've been able to do that. I believe one more together and they will move up to a tie with seventh place on the all time list. Number one is Mickey Lolich and Bill Freehan. The Tigers at three hundred twenty four. That's amazing. Think about these guys played 14 years together. And I said this the other day when we were in Pittsburgh and there is to a duo with 60 more starts together than these guys after 14 years and, and, Adam, and he walked him Adam really hasn't been hurt a whole lot and neither has Yachty. He's been hurt a couple times but not like he's missed years. Wayno had well, way do did but I mean like yeah. I mean they don't they're playing when they when they're both healthy they're together. Molina's had 15 consecutive years of a, at least 100 starts. Wayno had two major issues. One was the Tommy John coming back from that, and then he had the Achilles injury oh, that true. he suffered. I forgot in about the Achilles. Milwaukee. It's the first walk handed out by Wainwright, and now runners at first and second. Howie Kendrick, and he looks at a strike. Kendrick today, one for two, with a base hit to right field. Got to be careful with Howie, especially out over the plate. He is a dead opposite field hitter. See, they're shaded in the well, center a little bit, but that's where he's going to hit the ball in the right field, right center. 36 year old out of Jacksonville, Florida. Speaking of Achilles issues, he had that problem last year and only played in 40 games for the Nats. Gone by the name of Howie his entire career, but his entire family calls him Howard. He's in the Pioneer League. He had a baseball card made, and the card maker asked if he prefers Howard or Howie. Kendrick said, eh, "Doesn't really matter. I guess <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you so want." So he put Howie down, and everybody calls him Howie Kendrick. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Here's a one two pitch with one out. Kendrick pulls it. Edmund to second there. First. Got him. Double play. Five, four, three. Players staying on the field. We'll see if the Nationals want to challenge here. And they will. So they would challenge. 
what could be a key call in this game. And the crew chief, Sam Holbrook, will huddle up. Wow, that's close. Just barely safe. I think it would be really cool as if they just the umpires just went off the replay here and made their own judgment. You know what I mean? I, well, Clearly I, we'd be done already and we'd be moving it's on. A valid point <laughs> with games sometimes taking you know, they go to New York and there's umpire and crews there, and that's that's gonna be close. But there's other games that sometimes if challenges hit at the same time, it's gonna take a little bit for that crew to get to your particular challenge. Brian in the truck said that sometimes the umpires are the last ones to know if he's safe or out because mm -hmm. we've already seen the replay. They've already shown the replay up on the board. But then sometimes what we see is not what ends up getting called clearly. You think they have a rotary dial down there like the old school ones is why it's taken so long. Make sure you press one before the area code too. <laughs> They're doing the uh, now Mike Schilt talking it over with the home plate umpire, and I'm sure maybe that's about second base. So he may challenge. I bet he's challenging the slide at second. That would be my guess. So if it's ruled safe, which I would have bet right now, the umpires is a service to Major League Baseball and every fan that's watching should be saying, hey, we've ruled him safe at first. And now Mike Schilt is challenging. And this is what he is challenging about. Well, you can't. But we're left in the dark and we have no idea. Yeah, Look at the left arm right there. On. Yeah, you can't put your hands on him right there. Now that's got to be what it is, but still, why isn't that explained to the fan base? Why? You just did. Should be explained by the guys in blue. It's ridiculous. That's why I think the NFL did a really nice job as they mic up their guy and they explain. Everybody it. in this ballpark does not have the ability to see what we just saw. You're right. They're the ones that paid to come here and watch this game, and now they're sitting around watching, going, "Well, what's going on here? Why is Mike Schild even talking to him?" Well, the reason why is because he's been called safe on the play at first, and now Mike Schilt is challenging the slide at second base. We can explain that. It is still a guess from my point of view, a pretty educated guess. However, why not explain it? Safe there. And now Mike Schilt is going to get in an argument. And this is probably a little carryover from last night in which replay went against the Cardinals on a couple of different looks at a play at second base that clearly the runner was out. Hand on him, out. I'm with you on that one. But that needs to be explained to the fans. Runners at first and third. And it's Drubal Cabrera now at the plate. And it is pulled foul. Or hit the other way foul. The switch hitting Cabrera. Longtime major leaguer in a key spot in this game and replay again not going the Cardinals way and if Cabrera gets a base hit Mike Schilt might lose it. <laughs> might be what we need. Cabrera was DFA'd by the Rangers in August signed with the Nets. One of his former teams the Mets had interest but Cabrera was Upset the Mets showed no interest in bringing him back last offseason, so he de decided to sign with a division rival. 
And here he is. One ball and one strike. I guarantee you, Jimmy, and we probably have 30, 40,000 people here. Half of them have no idea why Mike Schilt was out there. <laughs> You're probably right. DeYoung is playing towards the middle. All kinds of room on the left side. And the 1-1 pitch. Curveball taken for a ball. Cabrera is lined out to right. And also is a sliding catch by Tommy Edmond in right to take away a hit. And a ground ball that is ruled foul. Goldschmidt tried to get it before that call was made. That's interesting because that's not the first base the home plate umpire, umpire call. call. What's going on here? It's a good play by Goldie. The 2-2. Two, two. Might be fair. No, no. That one was foul. Got it. I love you, Ryle, though. These are big games. They are big games. And these guys have been going at it since early February. I don't get it. Two balls, two strikes, and Cabrera fouls it back into the upper deck here at Bush Stadium. The pitch number 25 of the inning coming up for Adam Wainwright. He's at 86. He is due up first for the Cardinals in their half of the sixth. Runners at the corners. Got it. Wants the breaking ball. And a fly ball lifted out to right center. Should stay in the ballpark. It will. Bader at the edge of the track with the catch. There's not a cloud in the sky, but you bring your umbrella to shade from the sun. It's a warm day here in St. Louis. A reminder, it's going to be warm down in Florida pretty soon. Cardinals.com slash vacations. 1-800-892-7687 to head down to spring training as they work across the street on Ballpark Village. Those shots always make me a little queasy. I bet Tom me are director will ask the camera person I'm not sure who's on that camera hey pan out and, and get a full us, view yeah, of where you're at. at so that Dan will get a little queasy and that could be like in another city oh boy here we go oh that was in Anaheim when oh. they were taking down the stadium and opening Thanks, it up Tom. way up there they were opening up the stadium in Anaheim when I was there when they were redoing it was standing out in the outfield and guys were standing up there like that but in the upper deck holding down the stadium and two guys were walking across the steel beam and I was like holy cow and the I guy queasy. the guy yelled down at Bo Jackson he's literally on top of the top of the stadium and he said throw us a ball Bo Jackson <laughs> got a ball and flat footed and threw it and right into the guy's hand no way I swear the next day we came out for batting practice and it said Bo knows iron is that <laughs> and right? It on the thing. Stayed up there for the rest of the year. Oh, that's that was awesome. the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's nine strikeouts for Scherzer.
Now there's always different ways to look at those plays at second base and how you break it up. You know, the arm can be up, but is it, you know, one of those things where the, it'd almost be like if the leg came in and, and hit you in the shin or the thigh, you know, does the arm do that? And then on this play, Jimmy, does Tommy Edmund, is he better to just keep going forward and get to third and try to turn two? I thought about that initially on yeah, the play. I, that's what I was thinking too, or at least step on third to get the lead runner. Regardless, everything was all right. And a fly ball out to shallow left. Well, like you said, think about it a little bit. The rule does state that as long as he slides straight in a second, which he did. He did, but he's gotta, it's got to be a pretty, I mean, they're going to have to say it's judgment, right? But then it's going to have to be a pretty desperate plea to, in an effort to push or reach out. And I, don't, I think it just made it look too much like he's just sliding there and his arms were up, even though he did look like he kind of had it out there on purpose, but really wasn't obvious to whoever was watching the replay. So here is Colton Long, and that's a base hit to left. Little stripper finds a hole. Gotta love the shift. Made a great pitch. Guy gets a jam shot to short, turns into a single. <laughs> yeah, when he was at Parkway Central, that was two. Colton looked up to right, like I thought he started looking up towards right field when he hit it. I don't know, but that drive me nuts. Two on for Paul Goldschmidt. Two nothing our score. Goldie today is struck out and also fly to center. It's nothing in two. Got himself a hanger right there. You don't get too many of those off the of max. He just spun up there. This is that ball you try to stay inside and it just backs up. Best pitch in baseball. Backup slider. Like we said the other night. <laughs> it is too because you take a funny swing at it because you're expecting it to break. Here's an 0-2 pitch. Fowler dancing out there at second base. Not running and it's pulled foul. Cardinals have really tried to push it in this series against the Nationals. They just haven't had a lot of opportunities with their best base stealers, but when they've been on, they've been running. Schmidt two for 22 against Scherzer. Cardinals two for their last 35 with runners in scoring position. Just got a piece. It's been a tough homestand with runners in scoring position for St. Louis. Yes, it has. Dexter also has to be a little careful. Doesn't get too jumpy out there. Get the attention of Paul. Distract him a little bit. I know his intentions are trying to distract the pitcher, but sometimes you get that hitter just to kind of blink a little bit, especially with two strikes. It's not a thing a hitter wants to deal with. Here's the 0-2 pitch to the Cardinal first baseman, and then the second baseman cheating in there. That's Cabrera. And Fowler diving back in safely. Scherzer pitch count at 82. Bottom line, try to get into that bullpen of the Nationals, which this year statistically has not been pretty but in this series been very good. And the 0 2 to take away a little bit low one and two.
Marcelo Zuna on deck. Inning started with a strikeout of Wainwright. The ninth of the day for Scherzer. Fowler the base hit to left. Wong a base hit to left. And the one two pitch to Goldschmidt. He struck him out. Hear him grunting all the way up here with that pitch. Why also you see him a little fist pump right there. That's one of the things I love about Max is he's, he knows when it's a, a big at bat. He's not afraid to show some emotion out there. Mad Max, Max Scherzer moving up the charts. All time in baseball on the strikeout list. As I mentioned before, uh, before, there's no doubt he's headed to Cooperstown. 92nd career, 10 strikeout game. And now Fowler is picked off. Wong has to get back, and everybody's safe. Scherzer is this hot. He's out there battling his butt off in the heat. Makes a good pitch. Gets to be a base hit. Picks the guy off. Both runners get back. He should be out of the inning. Watch him right here. Gamer, though, should be out of the inning is right. Well, he stepped off. He never ran at Fowler. Oh, yeah. That... To make him commit one way or another. And that's how you get that rundown and you're out of the inning. Might be more mad at himself than anybody else. Ozuna has grounded to short and also struck out. Scherzer, three Cy Young Awards. Ten pitchers have done that. Multiple no hitters. 35 have done that. He's in that group. Only three have done both. That's amazing. And a fly ball hit down the right field line and it is caught a sliding catch and an outstanding play in right field by Adam Eaton in foul territory. The Cardinals strand their first two of the afternoon. We head to the seventh all important game and it's two nothing. Lewis Max Scherzer and Adam Wainwright Scherzer has struck out 10 along the way. He's allowed only four hits but two runs. Adam Wainwright, the outfield assist from Tommy Edmond back in the second to get Robles trying to score. Held the Nationals off the board. There's a double play turn to end the fifth. He has struck out two. He has walked one. Six hits. Nationals have stranded six. Both guys at 87 to get through six innings of play. Tell you what, both of those guys are going to say they're in a war today. Whoever, either way, win or lose. Here's Victor Robles. Reached on an air by Carpenter. Also grounded into a fielder's choice. Robles, the top prospect in the Nats organization, entering 2018 and again this season. Part of the Futures game back in 17. The 1-1. One, one. Out of play. Adam Wainwright in his career. 132 and 12 when he's been given a two run lead and that's what he has right now. Outside corner and he struck him out. Great pitch right there. I'm talking about the concentration level has to be so high. Trying to make these pitches and he is dotting corners. He's been throwing good curve balls all day. It's a great pitch. I find it interesting in September how managers want to go about what they do with their starters with expanded rosters especially when you're down. Now you've got a guy in Max Scherzer that's rolling with 10 strikeouts but you're down two you're in the seventh and he's on deck. And this may change it now with a base hit into right do you pull them back and it's misplayed in right by Fowler the throw in a second is not in time.
Again, the Nationals have had all kinds of issues with their bullpen, and I get that. And this is one of your horses in Scherzer, but you're running out of time. And one swing of the bat by a position player, and this game is tied. Oh, he took his eye off the ball right there. I thought maybe got a bad hop or something, but you can see him kind of just look up. That is not your typical Dexter Fowler in the outfield right there. Just got a little, a little careless, a little bit. And just a ground ball up. to short, taken there by DeYoung. So Chip Hale is saying, I'm staying with my guy for at least one more inning. Might be two innings if you're going to let him hit. Sure. I like the old school baseball right there. Just, if, you, if you can't score a run, which I don't know, maybe going about it differently with the guy on second, but you're going to need some runs. And if, if you give up any more runs, you're not winning this game. So kind of like a double edged sword. There's Trey Turner, top of the lineup. It's not like you're going to go to the bullpen and get somebody better than than Mad Max. And that's the the crux of it. <laughs> Here is Turner and there's strike one grounded into a double play grounded out to second and also a single. So Scherzer with 92 career double digit strikeout games one behind Kurt Schilling with 93 and that's it down the left field line and a fair ball a run will score and Turner puts himself in scoring position and the Nationals a base hit away from tying this game up Turner drives in his 48th. Adam Wainwright has scattered eight hits, but this might be the only bad pitch he's thrown all day. It's just a hanging breaking ball. The only time that breaking ball gets hit is when it's above the midpoint of the plate. It kind of like, I wouldn't even say thigh high, almost belt high and above. And Mike Schilt, the slow walk with the left handed Eaton coming up. Andrew Miller hot and ready to come out of the Cardinal bullpen. Tell you what, has not officially made the call, but I'm hoping these people stand up and applaud if and when Adam ever comes out of this game. You could see it right away. Yachty even said to Mike Shield, "We got this." Well, if you're going to ask two guys. Those would be the two guys to ask. Sure, about as honest as they come. got a lot of good things to happen here. He's got two outs. He's got a guy on second. So he has a base open if he gets behind to the lefty. Bad thing about that is you do have Rendon on the on deck circle, but she'll take your chances with a righty. And there's a strike. Another factor. Adam Eden with his base hit back in the sixth is now six for ten against the Cardinal right-hander. This might be your game right here. We'll see. I think you made a statement right there that this is his game win or lose right yeah. now. Because he's got to face Rendon also. In the air out to right. Fowler spun around. He's back, back, back and he makes the catch. Catch made by Fowler on the track. Well, as Eaton gave it a ride, Turner left stranded. And Adam, oh, thank you very much. It's 2-1, time to stretch. Partner of your St. Louis Cardinals. Gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. St. Louis will have Bader, who pinch ran for Matt Carpenter back in the fifth, stayed in the game, then Molina and DeYoung. The most double digit strikeouts. One Nolan Ryan. 
as Scherzer as we talked about earlier is now at 92 with 10 today one back of Kurt Schilling's 93 Nolan Ryan 215 games in which he struck out 10 or more 215 games Randy Johnson to 12 <laughs> That's incredible. It really is 200. Another slider and it's nothing at two. Scherzer averages about 102 pitches per game. His season high is 120, and there is strikeout number 11 on three pitches. Yadier Molina over two. He had bat in this ball game was Molina with Carpenter at second base with a leadoff double back in the fifth, and with two strikes, he grounded out to first. You say, what's the big deal? Well, he moved the runner over. Little, little bit of small ball. I'll tell you what. I that whole situation with him moving him over and then them running for Carpenter. If they stay and win this game two to one, that's the play of the game right there. The pitch running. I'm telling you, Matt Carpenter doesn't score that run that easy. There's an 0 1 pitch to Yadier Molina. Taken high and it's one and one. Again, Milwaukee and Chicago, both those clubs, two games back and playing later tonight. Here's a 1 1. We'll see how Mike Schill wants to play this eighth and ninth inning, but coming up for the Nationals, Rendon hits from the right side, Soto the left side, Kendrick the right side, Giovanni Gallegos was throwing in the Cardinal pen. He had Four batters last night and struck out three. And he's just about as good against lefties as he is righties. He's had a tremendous season. Two and two the count on Molina. Backs up for a ball. Scherzer has not walked a man today. Four hits, 11 strikeouts. Just his second three ball count of the afternoon. That's it. It's not a good game. Made a good pitch to Tommy to hit a home run and then just a little bit of small ball and the squibber scored a run. The squibber off the bat of Paul DeYoung. Just gets far enough where he can't get to it and come to the plate. Other than that, he's been pretty dominant, as we expected him to be. Here's a 3 2, and Molina pops it up into shallow center. Going out the second baseman, Cabrera, in front of Robles. Two outs and the shortstop Paul DeYoung, who had the rare one three run batted in to bring in Harrison Bader. Second run in this ball game. And for Paul DeYoung, it was his 75th run batted in. And it's fouled back. That's what I'm talking about right here. Harrison gets a great jump, pretty much on contact. And that ball just gets far enough up the line to not be able to come home with it. So one ball, one strike with two outs. Pitch number 100.
And De Young sends a fly ball out to deep left. Soto backing up. Never found it. Never found it. Battled the sun and De Young as it stays in play. Stays at second. Boy, you could see that coming. He just never, ever could find the baseball. I'll tell you what. If I go out there for batting practice and I'm standing in the outfield, there's about 50% of the balls that go up in the air I have nothing to do with right now. That sun is nasty. He just lost it. Just went in the sun at the last second. Sometimes the hardest ball to catch in the sun is not the one hit right at you. It's the one you actually have to move a little bit because it's just the ball basically chasing the sun and you, you got to go get it. And then if it goes in, there's nothing you can do to get it out. Team leading 31st double for Paul DeYoung, and that's hit out of play. 80 hits this year for the Cardinal shortstop. Or check that, 130 hits for the Cardinal shortstop, Paul DeYoung, and 58 of those have gone for extra base hits. Just going to keep getting better. The 0 1 pitch to the only man in baseball this year that is homered off of both Max Scherzer and Josh Hader. <laughs> he can lay claim to that. One ball and one strike. That home run came on a 1 2 pitch back in the third. So he smoked it out to right. The young, big insurance run at second base. That pitch up and in to Tommy Edmond. Edmond started the ball game in right field, outfield assist, sliding catch, then shifted to third base. A little bit of a purpose pitch right there. Just trying to make him or let him know that Max is aware that he is a pretty good hitter. And he's not going to give him the plate. Base hit into left. Here comes DeYoung. Soto, his throw to the plate. Not in time. Tommy Edmond comes through again. And a misplay and left by Soto looms large. Like to see Tommy go to second base on this, no matter what. Nice job of hitting. There you go. The shift got you again. Soto makes a good throw, but because it was down, he made a really good throw, the right throw. Because it was down, Tommy doesn't go to second, but I'm running to second no matter what and trying to draw a throw. And if you don't draw the throw, which you know they're going to try to go after the runner. You're at second base now with two outs. This is uh, Matt Weeders up to the plate, and he is strictly up there right now because he has numbers against Scherzer. He battled that lower leg injury, and this is his first playing time in a couple of weeks. The former Baltimore Oriole and Washington National, last two years spent with Washington. I think it was Scherzer that we were playing who was pitching and Peters wasn't catching or he might have been catching but he's in the dugout and he was literally watching him throw and every time he threw a pitch he called the next pitch. Well he would probably know these guys better than anybody. You know like it's like some of these guys have patterns. Oh. Good cut, two and one. Last action for Matt Wieters was back on the 31st of August. Tommy Edmonds certainly a threat to steal the base, too. Put some more pressure on Scherzer and the Nationals. You know my thought. Do it. Put on the gas pedal. Worst thing that could happen is the spot leads off the next inning. 
And the 2 1 fouled back. It's a good swing by Matt for not playing for a while. You mentioned that there are guys that have really made a conscious effort to take the ball the other way. Fowler, Wong stand out. They're everyday players. Here's another one against the shift where Weeters has really tried to almost guide the ball to left field. And here's the shift against him. Seems are wild here. A good time to hit a two run homer. And Wieters hits it out to deep right. It is a good time. It's gone. Two run shot. Matt Wieters. It's a great time, partner. Pinch hit home run for the former Washington National, Matt Wieters. <laughs> Look at the bench. Little kids. Weeders first career pinch hit homer. Scherzer out and it's 5-1 St. Louis. The first of August and my partner I think you were starting to see that timing come together and so was Yadier Molina and boom first career pinch hit home run the bench loving it Yachty loves it the fans they love it and St. Louis is opened up with three runs in this inning a lead that is knocked out Max Scherzer and Washington has to go to their bullpen Tanner Rainey our Chevy called to the pen Second time this year that Scherzer has allowed four or more earned in a game. It's tough to take the earned runs on the inning that transpired here with a ball that should have been caught by Soto but ruled a double. <laughs> yeah, that's true, huh? So he's given up five today. And remember, he had allowed four earned and four starts in St. Louis, but five today. Rendon, foul territory, the catch, the Cardinals, the lead, it's 5-1. The Cardinals needed a big moment, and they got it. Winners off the bench. St. Louis on top in game three. 5-1, Scherzer, six and two-thirds, seven hits, the five earned. Turner at the top of their lineup, two for four. Adam Wainwright, seven innings, and Tommy Edmond, two for three with a home run in has driven in two and scored two. So many key moments in this game. The Edmund home run, his outfield assist, the misplay by Soto, Sun aided double. Edmund coming through with a two out base hit. Did you see how fast he was running around second base on oh, that yeah. home run? That ball hits the hits the wall and comes back. He knows that that is an important run to score. 5-1 our score. Rendon, Soto, Kenrick. I thought also another key play and decision in this game and still six outs to go, but do you go to get Andrew Miller to face Adam Eaton? And instead they went with Adam Wainwright and Eaton sent one to the track in right with the tying run on. Good play by Fowler. The 1-1 pitch, strike two.
Anthony Rendon is fly to center, grounded to short, and also struck out. The Cardinals hold on this afternoon. They assure themselves at least a two game lead heading to Wrigley Field tomorrow night. Cubs playing later against Cincinnati. Milwaukee playing later against San Diego. Three and two the count. Outfield is deep. They are straight away. And the next to Rendon. Four run lead and a lead off walk. And it'll be Andrew Miller to face Juan Soto when we come back. It's 5-1. Adam Wainwright with another good start, especially at home. Danny Mac said, especially during the day. A lot of ground balls, some key pitches and some key situations. You see there's seven innings, scattered eight hits. Only one unearned run. Nice job, Adam Wainwright. Chevy called to the pen, Andrew Miller. Coming in here with nobody out in the top of the eighth. Rendon on first. See how Mike Shield wants to play it here, but you got Soto and then Kendrick, then Cabrera. If you get him, or most certainly if you get a double play, he goes to Martinez, you would think, for more than just a one inning save. We'll see. As you have talked about time and again during this homestand, this is playoff baseball. Yep. Here's an 0 1 pitch by Andrew Miller. And a fly ball, right field. Catch made by Fowler. The Cardinals yearbook is available for you with Yadier Molina on the cover. And a full in-depth interview with Yachty on his 10 plus years here in St. Louis. Three, four, five, nine thousand. Cardinals.com slash yearbook to pick it up. Here is Howie Kendrick. And a strike to Kendrick. What the outside edge is starting to open up. Gets the right handers. See the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Andrew Miller. 60% sliders now. Howie Kendrick, a career 374 hitter against St. Louis, and that is into shallow right, and it drops. The base hit, and Rendon stopping at second base. His second hit of the day. Couldn't have placed it any better. No, he couldn't place it any better. I actually thought this ball was going to get to the outfield when it got up in the air and just kind of doink. Couldn't throw it out there any better. This might be the final batter that Miller would face. You flip around here. Estrubal Cabrera, 257, three home runs from this side of the plate of his 17. So three have been hit from this side of the plate. And then after that, you've got the righties. We'll see how Mike Shield wants to play it. Carlos Martinez was unavailable on Sunday in that heartbreaking loss and then came back, recorded an out game one of this series. And the first pitch is fouled back. On the count. He is lined out to right twice and also fly to center with two runners on. Nothing at two. One thing about Andrew Miller, boy, he does not mess around and you know what's coming. It's fastball slider. He gets the ball and says, let's go. A 
little smile as he looked over at Kendrick, who was dancing off the bag at first base. He just had a chuckle. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Off the plate, and it's one and two. John Tempain, our home plate umpires, did a very nice job. Balls and strikes. It does. It has been very consistent. Very today. much so. It's all you want. That's the truth. Cabrera not only is he deep in the box but he's really well off the plate too, almost diving across the plate. Sometimes when guys do that you go inside you can really tie them up. The 2 2 pitch by Miller off the plate. So from 0 and 2 to a full count. Yeah, you're right. You want to pick your battle here. If the guy's standing that far off the plate, he's diving. Does he really want the ball away? Or is he diving to try to draw you in? You know, some guys stand off the plate and try to draw you in, thinking, oh, he wants the ball away from him, so I'll pitch him in. But maybe he's diving and cheating. That's something that you have to watch a lot of video to see. How that works. 3 2 pitch. And a fly ball out to right. Follow back at the wall. He's got it. Oh, what a play by Dexter and right. He robbed him. Looked to be over the wall. And Dexter Fowler, a fist pump. The crowd loves it. Great catch in right by Fowler. Who's my boy? That is an outstanding play. That is so hard to do in right field because you get spun around. He can, look how far he has to go back for this ball. Great timing. What a play. I'm telling you. That is a way better play than what you think it is. Did you hear the guys in the bullpen yelling? Well, that's a home run. Oh, that's definitely a home run. That's elbow high over the wall. Great play by Dexter Fowler started the day in center and robs Cabrera of a three run homer. It's 5 1 as we step aside. This Cabrera telecast presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game. May not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. With Jim Edmonds, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes with us. Great play moments ago by Dexter Fowler to take away a three-run homer. And now Victor Robles as Carlos Martinez is in. Our Chevy Cole to the pen. He'll try to pick up this out and then three more. And strike one. Tying run on deck, safe situation. Have to be aggressive here. Have to go after him. One pitch. It's amazing how easy that ball comes out of his hand and it hits. I think sometimes that's a change up and it pops up there 94, 95. With all kinds of run. And strike two. Runners had first and second. The next by Martinez. Check swing on the ground. Charging. DeYoung off balance throw. 
Dexter Fowler robbing Cabrera of a three-run shot to keep it a 5-1 St. Louis lead. Nissan drive of the game. Jim Edmonds said, well, it's a pretty good time for a two-run homer. And that's what we got, our Nissan drive of the game from Matt Wieters off the bench. It's the second homer I called this week. One good and one bad. Both sliders. Here's Colton Wong to lead it off in the Cardinals half of the eighth inning. Tanner Rainey second inning got the final out in the bottom of the seventh and the Cardinals picked up three. Juan Soto lost a ball in the sun that led to a two out double then Edmund a base hit and then Weeders off the bench a two run homer. But you know what I love about the shift? They're playing the shift on Colt Wong and they're throwing him first pitch change up away and then the second pitch fastball away. With both of those pitches, he's going to hit towards left field or towards shorts. That's when you have to shake your head and ask what is going on out there. Colton Wong is hitting 359 the opposite way. And yet you're still seeing the exaggerated shift here. The 2-1 pitch. And a base hit in the center. Just a nice, easy, relaxed like swing. That. His second hit of the day. Paul Goldschmidt, who is hitless today. The Cardinals have struck out 11 times in the ballgame, but they have a 5 1 lead. They want to push it here with Cole Wong. We'll see 20 plus stolen bases. And Rainey throws over. He's only been caught twice this year. Goldschmidt struck out swinging in the first, fly to center in the fourth, and struck out swinging in the sixth. Big gap in left center. Wong not running, and the pitch taken for a ball. The Nationals will have Gomes, a pinch hitter, and then Turner do up. Gomes, by the way, three for three. Three of their nine hits. They've out hit the Cardinals. Nine eight in the game. And the check on Wong. Tell you what, if he's one three five on a fastball, pick out a breaking ball to run on or a change up. Cole Wong's got a pretty good chance. Statcast AI powered by AWS. Runner goes. That's Wong. Throw to second, and he's save at second base. Held on to the bag. Well, like Cold Wong can not only steal a base, but then he'll take the pie out of your oven. <laughs> like I said, one three five, and he's got a really good chance to steal. Well, he's one three seven right there, and he's safe. I can't understand why you'd want to hold that on Wong with the potential of that sliding. The pad coming off the, in the, the bag. You don't have your fingers to kind of grab the bag. Yeah. Well, you have an extended hand now, at least. <laughs> Got an extra inch on your hands. So a challenge here by Chip Hale.
Well, it looks like he comes off the back, but then again, I can't say well, definitively. This should be able to tell you if he does. This is your only shot right here. He doesn't move back, though. See, he's on the edge right there. You don't ever see his hand go back towards the bag. You just stay still. Right there, he just doesn't move. But we've had common sense before and have lost the bet, so. Oh, I gave up now. I've, I'm done. Just sit back and watch. Yep. It is a very, very tough sport, you know, to be an umpire, referee, any of those, you know, major professional sports, certainly with umpiring. And, and these guys are very, very good, but I just think there needs to be a look at how they do replay, explaining it to the fans, those kind of things. Wong with now 24 stolen bases and only two caught stealings. If you look at 16, 17, and 18 combined, he had 21 total stolen bases combined. And 24 this year. Oh, letting them letting him go, turn him loose. Getting in situations what's favorable and he's going. You know, instead of guessing and kind of putting him out there to make his own decisions. It's basically like this is the guy. So get a jump and go. And it's obvious too that you got to get on base and he's been doing that. Yep. That's a big difference. Hitting 284 now this year. So he's been on base a lot in the second half. He's had plenty of chances to run. He's made huge, huge improvements. Three and one the count with nobody out. Runner at second base, Colton Wong. And it is a walk of Goldschmidt. So runners at first and second and nobody out. The Cardinals trying to tack on more leading 5 1. Now Ozuna with runners at first and second and strike one. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Marcelo Ozuna and the runners were off with the pitch. And Rainey has Wong in a rundown. That was the difference between Strasburg not getting a runner on a rundown and Rainey because Rainey ran right at him, made him commit. Scherzer. That's Today. his name, yeah. Scherzer <laughs> said Strasburg. But I know you got a lot of numbers going in your head, and you are 100% right. And you know what? You called it right away. Well, I was talking about Strasburg's start back on uh, <laughs> April 17th. I, don't, I, don't I know believe where you're you. Going. I believe you. But you're right. That's uh, what do you want to call it? Baseball fundamentals 101. Even though, even though Rendon, Rendon, when earlier in the game when they had that situation, he, if he throws the ball second base, uh, Dexter's out. Like he messed it up too. O2 pitch and it's off the plate a little bit low 99 from Tanner Rainey. And the one two pitch to Ozuna. That's to the backstop and Goldschmidt to second base.
just a goal right there, right between the five hole. Ruled a wild pitch. Two strikes on Marcelo Zuna, two and two the count. Jack Flaherty, Kyle Hendricks tomorrow. That game at 6.15. Full count. Friday afternoon baseball at Wrigley. Michael Waka, Jose Quintana. Saturday, Dakota Hudson against Cole Hamels. And then Sunday, Miles Michaelis and Yu Darvish. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Ozuna. Struck him out. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Wherever legendary MLB moments happen, Budweiser will be there. And by Ford, the official car and truck of the Cardinals. Here's Harrison Bader. And Bader lifts a fly ball into shallow left center. Robles with the catch. 5-1 our score as we head to the ninth here at Bush Stadium. Game three, Washington and St. Louis. Cardinals baseball in our Budweiser plays of the game. Adam Wainwright. Very solid seven innings. Tommy Evan got it started with a one two pitch and a home run. Off the bench, Matt Wieters against his former team and Dexter Fowler robbing Cabrera of a three run homer. Our Budweiser plays of the game. Big league baseball, Jim Edmonds. Always fun here at the ballpark, and this one's been a good one. This has been a great one. It's been a, uh, a game and then a game within the game. It's been a good game. Some great plays, like you said. Big home run. Here's Jan Gomes, a three hit day. And that's off the plate. Martinez got the final out in the top half of the eighth inning with two runners on and here we go with the top of the ninth 5 1 St. Louis nasty pitch there one and one line to third and on a hop there is Tommy Edmund. Who else? Why not? Make some web gems in both positions. He started the ball game. If he just joined us in right field, picked up his first ever outfield assist at the major league level, also made a sliding catch, then moved to <laughs> Third base, and he's been all over the place. Dominic Leone staying busy in that bullpen. <laughs> they had about 100 cups on the ground. Here's Ryan Zimmerman pinch hitting. Must be bored out there once, uh, once the closer comes in the game. Time to fool around. Zimmerman, the fourth overall pick by the Nationals out of Virginia in 2005. And he was the first player taken in the first round by the Nats after their move from Montreal. Did not spend much time at all in the minor leagues.
And he is from that area of Virginia that produced AI, Allen Iverson, Alonzo Mourning, Michael Vick, David Wright, Justin Upton. Great talent from that area. The one two pitch. Appeared in just 85 games last year. He's appeared in this being now his 43rd ball game. And two years ago, he had 36 home runs and drove in 108. Three and two, the count. And a walk off homer in his first ever game. Did he really? Yeah, sign of things to come because wow. he's had 11 career walk off homers. He's tied with Tony Perez, second most ever in the history of the National League. That is impressive. Been a good player, good hitter for a long, long time. 3 2 pitch with one out and nobody on. Zimmerman a bouncer to second. Long to Goldschmidt. That really was not an easy hop there at that, uh, that final hop to Cold Wong. A little bit of an in between short hop. Ball spinning. Let's play. That'd come in hard too. He plays. He's been playing pretty deep. And the Cardinals are out away from taking two of three. Trey Turner. And a strike. Ground ball. De Young. Cardinals win it. 5 1. They take two of three. Then yeah, that was a big win right there. And the way they won it was big. Battling one of the game's best pitchers through and through. And then some big plays to seal it off. Chicago and Milwaukee playing later tonight. So the Cardinals put a little pressure on them with this afternoon victory here at Bush Stadium. 5 1 the final. St. Louis with the win. The postgame show is next.